Hey y'all, Coach Nify here, doing a bit of a follow-up on a video I did not too long ago, looking at this UV meter that we just got. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how to protect ourselves from the sun. And toward the end, we're going to talk about how this shift in the magnetic field is actually going to result in our healing. All we just need to do is stay safe. So let's get on with it. Now, when we did that first video, we were on a overcast day with zero shadow being cast, completely clouded over at about nine in the morning. And I was showing you how the UV index, even at that time, was about three, which is the upper limits of safety for many of us. But seems like a lot of you guys missed the point. Not all of you, but there was a few commenters down there who brought out how there's another individual up there in Philadelphia using this same meter and he is showing the UV index of eights. Now, this is actually where I got this idea from watching his videos. Matter of fact, the last one that I watched of his let me know that he and I aren't on the same team, if you know what I mean. So I bought my own meter to do my own experiments. And let me show you what I found. Now you're looking at my meter here, it's at 1251. And like we said, this is standard time, not daylight savings time. So this is actually 1151. And that's important because it's not quite at high noon yet here in Alabama. Well, you see, even at that time, we have a UV index of 15. And today is still partly cloudy. So, even on a partly cloudy day here in Alabama, closer to the equator, where the UV index is higher, much higher than there is in Philadelphia, we're seeing 15s. You see, I took several pictures of this because it was a little bit hard to see. And guys, I believe I damaged my eyes out there just a little bit because I didn't have sunglasses on. And that's the purpose of me doing these videos is not to pick on anybody, but I'm trying to be helpful. And I'm kind of like you guys, guinea pig out there in the sun and all. And one thing that we learn is we need sunglasses on. But you see here, another 15. Another picture with 15. But there you see it going up to 15.5. And the reason why I kept taking so many pictures is because there was a 16. I had saw a 16. And you see right there, 16.5. So those guys down in the comments section who seem to be intentionally missing the point saying, man, that's nothing. We're getting UV indexes of eight up here in Philadelphia. Come on, guys. He's going out there at high noon on the hottest days and he's getting an eight. Here I am in Alabama on a partly cloudy sky and it ain't even high noon, and I'm getting a 16.5. That's more than double. So don't, don't miss the point, guys. And the point is, is that our sun is actually getting really dangerous. And it's, it's not finished yet. It's going to get much worse. And that's what I'm trying to bring out to everybody, is that we are actually being burnt up right now, as we see over there in 2 Peter chapter 3. It talks about this fervent heat. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm just now understanding that this fervent heat is coming from the sun. Like it says over there in Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 26, the sun is becoming seven times hotter than we're normally used to. And guys, I believe I know why this is. I mean, like when you look back over there in the book of Deuteronomy and chapter 32, down there in about 24, it's talking about a bit of destruction, but it's also talking about burning heat. And the result of this, just like you read about over there in Deuteronomy chapter 29 and 24, we have been burnt just like in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah because we have gotten away from the covenant and its earth and the majority of the people on it have turned toward evil. Now, this shouldn't be surprising. I mean, if you look at the current events that's going on in the world, you probably are not putting two and two together. 
But do you remember that just a few months ago, the Pope had the whole world bowing down to an idol of the Virgin Mary as he was trying to put a cease to the war? Well, we see that that didn't work. But what he actually did was cause the majority of the people on the planet, being that Catholicism and Christianity is so great and many people follow the Pope, that act caused the majority of the people on the planet, even people that don't even go to church, to bow down and worship an idol. He turned the whole world into idolatry. And now the planet is burning up because of it. See, these covenants, guys, there ain't no joke. You can't play with this stuff. I mean, there, there's people down in the comment section talking about how it don't matter no more because there's so many people doing it on the Internet and all of this. And guys, read the scripture. Nobody's being held accountable for anything at this moment. That's why there's so many people breaking the commandments and seem to be getting away with it. At least it seems they're used to being. But we're getting closer to that day. So let's go on. We're looking here at the beginning of the covenant, which is four chapters going from Exodus chapter 20, chapter 21, chapter 22, and chapter 23. If you plan on surviving this tribulation, you better not break any of those rules in there. You better get used to living by those rules right now. I'm being serious. Um, I mean, I don't like telling people what to do, guys, but we're in a war right now and we got to recognize who the enemy is. And that's not just the sun and the elements, but it is mainly those people who are steering us away from these scriptures, just like the Pope turning us toward idolatry. And their day is coming. Like you see there in verse six, it says, showing mercy to the thousands of them who love him. There were two million people out there that heard this commandment, two million, but yet he's only speaking of thousands that would actually obey this rule. What happens to the other ones? They're gonna be rebellious and do what they wanna do. And they're going to learn the hard way. So let's go on. I want to jump over here to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 15 through 31, which is a warning against idolatry. I find it best to look at it from the New International Version because there's less ambiguity. People are reading it from the King James Version and getting a little bit twixed up because it says graven image. No, guys, what he means is no image. That's probably why. My eyes feel a little burnt right now simply because I took the picture of that UV meter out there. Guys, I hope you understand what I'm saying here. You can actually learn from my example. So take it from me. My skin is a little bit tingly and my eyes feel a little bit dimmer just by being out there looking at and taking pictures of that UV meter. But look down here. In verse 16, where it says, And so you do not become corrupt and make yourselves an idol, an image of any shape, whether formed like a man or a woman. So you can't take a picture of nothing. People are like, oh, we're not worshiping it. Yes, you are. That's the purpose of actually taking the picture so you can sit there and look at it. But if they want to do that, that's their business. You know, it tells me. That if I go in and actually point this out to them, they're actually going to get mad and angry. And that's why I don't. So let's go on. We want to get back into what's going on with our son. Looking at some verses from the Third Testament of the Bible. While the Pope was having you to bow down to an idol and to drink blood on Easter. What he should have been doing was telling you about this book which is actually the second coming of our Messiah. The word made flesh. Well, he didn't come as flesh like he did the last time. But just like the book of Revelation says, he came back as the word of God. So let's jump down to chapter 55, which is all about the purification of the world and humanity in the judgment. This tells us what's gonna happen, guys. It talks about the pestilences. It talks about the sun. It talks about the earthquake. It talks about the wars, volcanoes, all of it. And that's why a lot of people are trying to steer you away from this. It's like they're actually trying to keep you blinded so this comes all up on you. Got you going to work, cutting tree limbs in the heat of the day, wondering why your skin is burning. Guys, just, just cover up. 
Get you some UV glasses for sure and some long sleeve shirts. Try that dry fit because we got a ways to go before we're out of this. But anyway, let's jump down here and see what chapter 55 says about it. You see right there in verse 79. Let me read it. It says, Soon a time shall begin in which there will be great happenings for the world. The earth will tremble and the sun shall cause glowing rays to burn its surface. The continents from one end to another shall be touched by the pains. Every corner of the earth will suffer the purification. And no creature shall escape the hardship and atonement. So this is letting us know what is to come. And I do say what is to come. Because notice right here up where it talks about these glowing rays burning the surface of the earth. Notice how it's in a sentence that first starts off with the earth will tremble. This is talking about the great earthquake. So the way I read this, and you can correct me if you see something different. But this is saying that after the earth trembles, then things are going to get really hot down here. See, what's going on is the Earth is going through a pole shift. There is currently a reversal of the Earth's electromagnetic field. Meaning that our poles are reversing back to where they're supposed to be. And everything will return back to normal once everything settles out. But between now and then is what we call the day of the Lord or the apocalypse or the tribulation. Let me show you what I mean. I'm over here in the book called The Keys of Enoch. Now, if you've seen our channel lately, we've been talking about the keys of Enoch. And I understand that it's a difficult read, but that's all right. It's kind of like a science book in all of this. If you've read the Third Testament, it tells you about a lot of events that's going on, a lot of changes that's going on. Well, if you really want to understand how those changes work and when they work, you can come to the keys of Enoch. And you can imagine when you're talking about how all of this Spiritual stuff is working on a scientific level. It is quite difficult, but don't be fooled and don't be tricked, guys, because it is divinely inspired, even though the people that are trying to hide this book from you, it's like they are hoarding it for themselves, reading it in the back room, and they stuck a bunch of witches out in front to keep you from looking in. They even use trigger words to throw us off. Like chakra? Well, turns out a chakra is nothing more than the seals that we hear about in Revelation chapter 7. A seal and a chakra is the same thing. And the Merkaba? Who knew that a Merkaba is actually those chariots that Durak Abar was singing in his song? Those chariots of fire that came down to swoop up Elijah? That's actually what the book is talking about. But they use these words in order to distract us. Like I said, it's like they put witches at the door. So don't be like those guys who hear these strange words and think there's something wrong with them. Like the pastor of my church back when I showed her the third testament in the first chapter. She read the word era, E-R-A, and because she didn't recognize that word, she gave me the book back. But anyway, let's go on. We're looking here at key number 118 and I want to show you verse 7 which says there is presently occurring a space-time overlap with the higher evolutions as the earth's solar systems enters the electromagnetic null zone a vacuum area in space which will change the magnetic forces of creation so this is why the earth is going through this change it's actually a change in the entire solar system guys and this occurs all the time but the problem is, is this, this is the first time humans will experience it in the 6,000 years that we've been on this planet. And we're really not ready for it. But it seems like the powers that be are trying to keep us from being ready for it, even setting us up by making us worship idols and denounce this scripture that actually tells us that these events are coming up on us. But it's not only the electromagnetic field that's changing. You see there in verse 8, all of the living creatures on the planet are going to change as well. Some will become more evil, while some will become more Christ-like. This is why people are getting flat out mean and hateful. This is why the scripture says that the love will wax cold. It's because as this magnetic field changes, some of these people who are used to acting normal, 
will experience a change that's actually going to make them act mean. Like that dude in the movie talking about the mandubula oblongata or something like that. Yeah, these people are going to start acting like crocodiles and alligators out here. We see it already, but at the same time, we see that some will become more Christ-like. And we can see that too. This is because of the change in our electromagnetic field. But look there in verse 9. Matter of fact, let me read it. It says, this will bring about a complete reorganization of the Earth's life system as the human creation begins to operate with a new magnetic and electromagnetic creative power. Yeah, guys, this is talking about the kingdom of heaven. Not only is this going to purify the Earth of all wickedness, those crocodiles are going to eat each other, basically, and leaving only the righteous seed behind. But it's actually going to change the way our bodies work. It's actually going to cause us to be healed like we read about over there in Malachi chapter 4. Notice that the word son is capitalized there. I've actually been confused by this verse for many years. But now it makes sense. The son is actually going to purify us. And by doing so, it's going to bring forth this healing. Guys, our healing comes on the other side of this pole shift. And we'll know that the pole has shifted when we go through the global earthquake. So we just need to hold on for a little bit longer. And the operative word there is hold on. Let's drop down there to verse 18. And let me read that. It says, during the completion of the cycles of star progression, our entire solar system will enter into a vacuum in space where no electromagnetic fields exist. This is called an electromagnetic null zone. At that time, cosmic waves will enter the polar areas of the Earth and penetrate the very core of the globe. These waves will not only release some 4.6 times 10 to the 15th ton miles of torque on the Earth, but will trigger unseen wave properties from the core of the Earth, placing catastrophic stress on the shell of the Earth and spinning the mantle of the Earth. Now, like I said, this is a science book, guys. This is what the scripture means when it says all things will be revealed. This, along with the Third Testament and the Shepherd of Hermes and all the scriptural documents like Enoch and all of these books that are coming out now are making us aware of what's actually happened, making things clear on how all of this works. So don't be surprised when you see terms that you don't understand, like 48.6 times 10 to the 15th ton miles of torque? Go to your science teacher and ask him what's going to happen when that's applied to the Earth's electromagnetic field. Isaiah tells us what's going to happen over in chapter 24 and verse 20 when he says, The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage. That's the global earthquake. I've heard it described as the shaking of a dog as it gets out of the water. This is going to rearrange the surface of the planet, even causing part of it to go underwater and disappear. But I don't mean to scare anybody. My point is to make you understand where the danger is coming from. All you have to do is get in the shade. Only come out when the clouds are out and stuff like that. Turns out the clouds are doing a lot of work for us. I'm using this meter to understand certain stuff like that. And as long as you're under clouds, you're pretty much safe. But if you're in the direct sunlight, you're getting burnt, whether you know it or not. But anyway, we're looking here at Revelation chapter 7, where it's talking about the seals. And like we said, the seals and the chakras are the same thing. So if you understand how chakras work, that means you understand how seals work. And if you would, explain that to me down in the comment section. I am very unfamiliar with chakras. I've been trying to learn what these chakras are. But like I said, they got witches at the door. Every time you click on and try to understand what a chakra is, there you got some person trying to make you visualize how a light bulb in your butt is going to grow roots to sprout down into the earth. Man, come on. You're going to have to do better than that, guys. Some of us have actually read the scripture and there ain't nothing like that in the scripture. Nowhere in the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Third Testament. There's nothing like that in 1st Enoch, 2nd Enoch, or 3rd Enoch. So, if anybody truly, and I mean truly, understands what these chakras are, please help us out. 
These guys are doing a good job of distracting us, keeping us from this word. And if you can't tell, I'm a little bit perturbed by this. So I better go on. What I really wanted to show you was down here in verse 16, how our father plans to protect his people from the heat. He knew this day was coming. That's what the Bible is all about, giving us a warning and helping us understand how this is all working. And he does have a plan to keep us out of the sun. And part of that plan is probably this video. All we really have to do is understand when it is that we're getting burnt up. Direct sunlight in the heat of the day is a no-no. It's burning our eyes and it's burning our skin, but it's also purifying the earth. So let's go on. We'll come over here to Isaiah chapter 49, which is also talking about how our father plans to protect us from this sun's rays. Not everybody's going to get protected. If you read the entire chapter 49, it is really only those who put trust in the word, put trust in the scripture and is willing to do what it says. Like the covenant says, thousands of people who will obey and do what the scripture says will be protected from these sun's rays. Naturally, like being under trees or in the clouds or supernaturally with the healing that comes with all of this. Like this verse we see over here in Key 319, verse 29. We plan on doing more classes on how all of this healing works after I reread Key 317. So y'all make sure you have the bell notification button pushed. But let me bring you back over to Key 113, which briefly speaks on it. Let me just read it. It says, the third face will work with the medicine of light, more specifically, electromedicine which will allow various electromagnetic fields to spin up the chemistry of the human body, the human DNA RNA matrix to work on a higher wavelength of light. So now like I said, I keep telling you, this is a science book, but it's telling us how this healing process, this healing that we hear about is all connected to the change in the electromagnetic field. Matter of fact, over here in key 304 verse 31 says, and before the larger electromagnetic change happens, man will also understand how new growth effects will be the result of electromedicine, which uses electromagnetism. Man, by using the light surgery of electromagnetic penetration into bone marrow, will be able to create new bone growth. So, yeah, from what I understand in here, right before the most severe of these events, we're going to learn how to heal ourselves. And how healing is connected to this electromagnetism, even to the point where we can regrow bones, maybe even teeth. It doesn't mention it here. But like we said, the point of this video is that we have to maintain until that day comes. We have to stay healthy because remember the Bible says those that endure to the end will be saved. So you guys be sure to cover up, get you some shades. Get you some long sleeve shirts, get you some sun hats, stay out of the sun, and stay away from these pagan holidays. Now is not the time to be worshiping the sun or anything other than our Father, our Heavenly Father, hallowed be His name. And may that same Father bless you and keep you. And may our Heavenly Father, hallowed be His name, make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May He lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace.